like to show you a little bit about uh, the new Focus series that we created as a replacement of the current Focus XD. We launched these uh, products two days ago. So the first step is, what is Focus actually? Well, Focus is a series of active wireless speakers. It's probably the most advanced system that you can find in the world today. The great things about Focus is it's a very user-friendly system. So we designed it uh, to be very simple to use, but also in the mindset of, you know, there are many ways to, to simply play music. There's music all around us. We can put our phone on the counter and have music. The point is not that it's simple. We, it's a simple way to play high quality music. But that's the system we, we have tried to make. So I'll go through all the details that go into this. It will take around 10, 15 minutes and I'm going pretty fast because there's a lot of things to cover. So I hope you'll hold on and then I'll play some music at the end. Uh, we have a guided setup process uh, within the app. The speakers come paired out of the box. Uh, so as soon as you uh, connect them to, uh, to the power outlet, you simply go through the step up process in the app to get them connected to Wi-Fi and then you're ready to play your music. Um, as an auto automatic input sensing feature, so as soon as you put a signal into the speakers, they will boot up and play whatever uh, the input is. It will change automatically if you're switching to a different source. It streams essentially everything. We have a very high-end streaming platform. Uh, in here it's a Stream Unlimited 810X, uh, which is a chipset you will find in the most high-end uh, separate streaming boxes available. And we built this uh, chipset into the focus speakers. Then we built a software package around this, which makes sure that we have a complete clean uh, signal path throughout the speakers. So one thing is again, having all the streaming services in there, but in active speakers, especially wireless speakers, you can very often have conversions inside the digital domain. Just because it's digital doesn't mean that nothing is being changed. So we are making sure that nothing is, is, uh, is interfering with the signal, even in the digital path. Um, I'll go a little bit back to that. We have a lot of services uh, in this speaker, and so I'll just quickly run through them. It's a Rune-ready endpoint, meaning we can play to it directly from within Rune. We have AirPlay 2 uh, and Chromecast. We have Spotify Connects, Tidal Connects built into the speakers. QPlay is a service for China. UPnP, uh, Bluetooth, Net Radio, and Podcast. And it is WISA certified. So what do we mean by WISA? WISA is the system that we are using to connect the two speakers together to transmit this uh, music from the primary speaker to the client speaker. So WISA is a 24-bit, 96 kilohertz uh, solution. It runs in the 5 gigahertz uh, frequency range, but it runs in frequency bandwidths that are outside Wi-Fi. That means you don't get into interference with uh, Wi-Fi when you're using the WISA system. What this means is that we can run the system at a very low global latency, meaning the delay from uh, an input signal until it comes out of the speakers is extremely low. Uh, in this case, 2.6 milliseconds. Uh, to give you an idea, our original Focus XD was already low enough to not have uh, lip sync, and that was 20 milliseconds. So this is extremely high performance. But actually, more importantly, what we have is one microsecond of delay between the two speakers. So they're always in perfect time, which means you will always get a perfect stereo image. And the interesting thing here is, if you're using a Wi-Fi based system to run a set of speakers like this for the connection between the two speakers, you can get down to one microsecond with a Wi-Fi signal, but that means you need to buffer a lot, so the global delay will be much higher. So if you see a system where they're claiming one microsecond latency, they're talking about that type of latency and not the delay that is important for lip sync. So this one is a very high performance of both, and that's why we're using the WISA system. That's another trick about the way we implemented WISA. So we have what we call a secondary WISA. Uh, so essentially we can connect to uh, open third-party transmitters if other companies uh, well, other companies are making uh, WISA transmitters uh, for some of their systems. We can connect to those as soon as they open. Um, we have a few examples of that. Uh, an American company called Axim makes a link box, uh, which is a USB transmitter. You can connect that to LG TVs, uh, Xbox, PC and Mac, um, and then transmit the signal wirelessly to the speaker in the same quality as you have between the two speakers that I just described. There's also a WISA sound send box, which is a small round box with an HDMI input with audio return, meaning you can simply connect that box to uh, any TV with, uh, with audio return and again transmit the signal wirelessly to the two speakers. So there are plenty of ways to make this 
really simple to use in a, in a normal living room setup. One point I have to make here is that if you see a Wiser logo on a loudspeaker uh, system, you have to double check with that supplier if, the, if it is an open system. Because Wiser is also used by a few suppliers uh, to connect between their speakers only, and they close the software down so it doesn't work with other systems. Uh, but our systems and several other companies in the, in the market are using the open version so we can uh, work together uh, as soon as you see the Wiser certified logo. This is a picture of the back, pla back plate of the primary speaker. So what you will find here is uh, a coax digital input, an optical input, an analog input, which I would like to spend a little time on. Um, we didn't just add an analog input just to have it. We spent a lot of effort into making sure you get a high quality sound from the analog input. It sits on a separate board, so it's placed away from uh, the wireless, uh, uh, wireless chipsets. And, uh, and antennas, uh, so we get a low distortion, low noise uh, figures. It's very high components that are sitting on the analog board. And we're actually coming together to the, back to the, the software platform that I was uh, discussing. When you're putting analog signal into this, we change the whole architecture to make sure that we don't have any sample rate conversions in the signal part. So what this means is if you run at 48 kilohertz between the speakers, which is an option, the AD converter will switch to 48. If you switch to 96 kilohertz with higher resolution, the AD converter switches to 96. The same as the DSP in the system and all the other chipsets along the way uh, uh, is, is linked up with the connection between the speakers to make sure we have, again, a completely pure path of the whole uh, signal chain uh, within the system. We have an Ethernet connector if you prefer to uh, have a wired connection to the uh, internet. There's a coax speaker link, so if you connect a coax cable between the two speakers, uh, you can run it at up to 192 kilohertz. And again, like I mentioned before, then the whole uh, uh, chain of chipsets inside the speaker changes to 192, so that's the actual resolution you're getting without conversions. There's a subwoofer output, and next to the subwoofer output, you'll notice a trigger output. So that means that if you have a, a subwoofer with a trigger uh, input, like the Down Audio subwoofers have, we can control the subwoofer from the speaker. So when you turn on the speakers, uh, the subwoofer will automatically turn on and off together with the speakers. As a USB port, you will see that's actually a service-only input, so I'll get a little, bit back, a little bit later on how to do firmware updates. The uh, remote control included in the box runs with Bluetooth, so you don't need line of sight, you don't need to point at the speaker to make it work. It's just always connected to the, uh, to the speakers via Bluetooth. Uh, there's some simple playback controls, but the most important feature of the remote control is the lab buttons labeled 1, 2, 3. What that allows you to do is save internet radio stations uh, or podcasts and even Spotify uh, connect playlists. You can save those as presets. So when you come home, you want to listen to music, all you have to do is press one button and it starts playing that radio station that you saved. You don't even have to turn the system on first, it's just one press and then you have sound. We have an app um, which is mostly used for the setup and configuration part of it. Uh, we are not trying to create a layer between uh, you and your, your music service. Um, so we, it is used for the setup and configuration for the internet radio stations uh, and podcast setup for the preset buttons. And then it's used for firmware updates, meaning if there's a firmware update, the app will notify you there's an update, one push of a button, and it automatically updates the primary speaker which is connected to the Wi-Fi. So once that is updated, the primary automatically updates the client speed. So again, a very simple process for up keeping it updated in terms of firmware. Uh, the app, of course, is available for iOS and Android. Um, we have one neat trick, well, not more than one, uh, but one I would like to talk about is the speaker is uh, direct live ready. And uh, I believe this is the first time in an active speaker system uh, that we are providing this. So what is Direct? Direct is uh, the market leading room adaptation technology. There's a, a few uh, nice details about uh, the way Direct works. What it allows you to do is set up a microphone in your room, do some measurements, and then send the correction curves to, uh, to the loudspeaker. Direct has a user selectable frequency range, so you can decide whether I want to correct the whole frequency range, or if I prefer only to correct the bass, then you can select the exact frequencies to where the cutoff that you want to have in, in your system. The correct frequency and time. It also has an option for to uh, 
uh, to customize the target curve uh, however you want to actually work. Like I said, you connect to the focus speakers from within the app, and then all of the control of the room correction system uh, is inside the drag app. And that all simply controls through the network, it controls the speaker, sends the test tones, and you control the volume while you're doing it, all within the app. And then at the end, simply upload them to the speaker. And then in our app, you have a switch to turn the direct room correction on. The license and microphone for direct is purchased separately. So you buy the license from the direct for the software, and then you need a measurement microphone where we are recommended, uh, recommending Mini DSP UMIC 1, which is more or less the standard now for room correction uh, systems. It's a very high quality microphone that costs 100 euros. So there's no, really no reason to use anything else than that. Please go to direct.com for more information on, on this. Like I'm saying, we do not include room correction with the purchase of the speakers. We support it if you want to use it. And if you don't want to use it, you're not paying for it. Then we have a, an extra trick uh, in the uh, new focus speakers, which is a smart grill. So what makes a grill smart? What happens is, I put this on the speaker. You'll notice that the LED was blinking blue. So the speaker knows whether or not the grill is on. And it even changes the picture in the app to just to let you know that it's working. So why is this a good thing? That's because when you are putting a piece of cloth in front of the tweeter, it lowers the amount of tweeter a little bit. So we measured the systems in our Jupiter measurements uh, facility and uh, did a separate EQ for when the grill is on. So we're changing the EQ depending on is the grill on or not. So it's, this is a feature I really, really like because it's not just an, you know, a, a neat party trick. It's something we did to actually improve the sound, so you get the best possible sound, no matter if you're using the grill or not. And it happens automatically, you don't have to go into the app and change the setting. As soon as you put it on, the sound is automatically uh, adjusted. Yes. I just like this as an example for how much into detail we went in this platform to make sure that every single step of the way is optimized for the best possible sound. It's a little easier to, to see that than what we did in terms of software. But there's a lot of hidden details like this where all the minute details are optimized for sound. So inside the speaker, I'm not going to go through all of the details about our drivers, but we're using legendary Dynaudio driver technologies on the two small uh, speakers, Focus 10 and Focus 30. We have the best 14 centimeter woofer we have made to date uh, with some very uh, high-end technologies inside. Very high bass performance at the same time very good mid-range performance uh, using our technologies. The uh, Focus 50, which we are going to play a little bit later, has an 18 centimeter woofer of essentially the same driver, similar technology. Then the mid-range of the Focus 50, I'd like to point that out, is a very high quality mid-range driver designed specifically for mid-range use. This is a driver we actually also used in the Contour 60 loudspeaker, which is a quite high-end passive loudspeaker. Just to give you an idea of the level of performance that we are expecting from this, we are putting in very high quality drivers. We have the Serotar tweeter uh, with our famous 28 millimeter coated soft dome that we have been perfecting for 45 years, as you can see in the corner. If you look at the old speakers, essentially the dome part is the same, just slightly optimized along the way. This is what part of what made an audio famous through the years. We added the Hexis, which was developed for confidence a few years ago. Um, and what the hexes does is disperses the sounds coming back from the back side of the dome to make sure that it doesn't reflect back into the dome and create distortion. So a tweeter with the hexes just sounds cleaner and more detailed than one without this. It's very apparent if you compare new Dan audio speakers with old speakers that don't have doesn't have it. Um, one more point I would like to make about the tweeter is if you look at it, this is a ferrite uh, magnet. On, uh, I mentioned contour before. On our passive speaker lines, in the, in the highest end models, we're using neodymium magnets, which are more powerful with a higher sensitivity. This is good if you make a passive loudspeaker. It helps you in the design of a crossover if the tweeter is more sensitive. In an active speaker, that is not necessarily a good thing, uh, because when you raise the sensitivity, you also hear noise levels more. And we, because we have plenty of power here, when the 
sensitivity of the tweeter is higher than the woofer, which it is here, you have to turn down the tweeter. So if you're doing that in the amplifier, you are turning down the maximum volume, but the noise level stays the same. So now we have worse signal-to-noise ratio because you choose that better tweeter. So by using the ferrite version with, with the lower sensitivity, you actually get a better sound, even though it's, it's in principle, this is what in a uh, passive loudspeaker would be the cheaper uh, version of the driver. In the active loudspeaker, it performs better than the neodymium version, and that's why we put it in. We have uh, to make sure that we're actually reaching the maximum performance of uh, these very high quality drivers. We went to Copenhagen, well, there's a company called Pascal Audio. Pascal makes uh, very high end uh, class D amplifiers. We're already using these in our core studio reference monitors that you can see examples of uh, outside. Um, these are very high output, very low distortion class D amplifiers, very high peak output. Uh, and other than the objective performance, we just generally like the way they sound. They have a very, very detailed sound with very low listening fatigue because they never get harsh to, to listen to no matter what you're doing. So that's why we really prefer to use those. We have 110 watts for the tweeters in all of the models. And then we have either one or two times 280 watts. Just to quickly explain that, in the Focus 30, the compact uh, floor standing model, we have 280 watts for each woofer. This is essentially because it's a two and a half way design, meaning the two woofers does not receive the same signal. So we need a, a separate channel for each. We don't actually need that much power to maximize the woofer, but we have to do it because of the design. In the uh, Focus 50, like you're seeing here, the uh, mid-range actually gets its own 280 watt output channel, which is more than enough for mid-range. Uh, and, and then we have one two, 280 watt channel for the two woofers together. So they are sitting in parallel because they are playing the same thing. So the natural question becomes, okay, why didn't you use one channel for each of these woofers? And it's simply because we are already designing the speakers in a, uh, the amplifier in a, in a way, so we always have enough power to maximize the excursion of the woofer. So no matter what frequencies you're putting in, no matter if it's dynamic or compressed, no matter how long time you're doing it, the amplifier is never the limiting factor. So putting in more, a higher uh, performance amplifier would simply mean that the DSP would limit the output of the amplifier to stop the, uh, uh, the driver from damage. So a 500 watt amplifier, for instance, would never actually be playing at 500 watt. Uh, it would stop uh, before the, the 280 watt level, more like closer to 200 watts. Uh, so that's why we have to set up the way, that, uh, the way we have it. It also means that you can play whatever music you want for as long as you like. Uh, it's never a problem for the speaker to do that, which is a, a very nice thing. And it's also safe, always safe to do it because the DSP um, protects the drivers. These output channels have very high peak power, like I'm, I'm saying, so again, <coughs> sorry. Uh, you're always able to maximize the drivers. The Pascal amplifiers are designed for heavy duty studio workloads. So imagine you're working with, with music, playing loud music 10 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, that's what these amplifiers are really designed for. So again, sturdiness and longevity is, uh, is a key feature. Um, one extra detail about uh, how much effort we put into making a very high quality amplifier. This whole amplifier module and the main board that's uh, in there is all made in Denmark. So. That's just giving you maybe an example of, of uh, something that's quite unique in the active speaker industry in terms of how to design and build a speaker for the absolute best performance. Finishes, we have a high gloss black, <coughs> high gloss white, walnut real wood veneer and blonde real wood veneer. I think that's a very interesting part about the focus. Uh, a lot of times if you have a simple to use active loudspeaker, you don't necessarily get the option to have a real wood veneer that looks nice in, in your living room with a, with a, a typical Scandinavian look to it, uh, which is what we were trying to achieve with the new Focus. <laughs> Pricing. So the Focus 10 is 5,000 euro per pair, Focus 30 is 7,500 euro per pair, and the Focus, 6, Focus 50 is 10,000 euro per pair. Um, for those that already know the current Focus XDs, this is actually a very comparable price range. But the performance level we have here, both in terms of what it can do and the quality of the drivers, and especially on the amplifier side, 
is a completely different level from anything we've done in Access to the US before. So you need to keep that in mind when you're looking at these prices.